We're going to give you the best and beyond. We're going to go beyond the game. And we're going to raise the standard like never before. So you can learn faster, in more entertaining, fun, easy, simple ways that will outperform anything that's been done before because that's true evolution. And tonight we have one of the guests that is joining us at the Global SLR in October. And he's a gentleman. I've known him for many years. And on a recent call, Rash asked the brilliant question, what would be your superpower as a teacher if you had one and so on? So we, it got me thinking as the the impact of a rush always makes me, me think in like greater ways. It's like an instant mind expansion, you know, it's like mental fitness and boom. Exposure to a rush, your mind is expanded. And we're going to take a little bit of a different angle to also help you with not only seduction, but lifestyle and relationships. And for that, since our guest is super authentic, very genuine, so pleasant to be around a, in a true, the true romantic hero. You know, well, we often talk the alpha, but the romantic hero, like him, there's no others. Mm -hmm. So that would be his superpower, but we'll ask him personally. And at the same time, I want to deliver some hardcore self-help. So I just want to say, since our guest is really authentic, genuine, so many men space out and they speak in a way that's very superficial. You, you don't really feel them. With John, you right away feel his presence because he's present in the world. I'll outline more of those great qualities and you guys will discover them. Uh, the angle that we'll take is I genuinely want to say then, and John, I know you had concerns at the time because the things were really going crazy on my side and you, you should some some re real true brotherhood, you know, and strength. Yes. And uh, uh, so I, I, wa I want to genuinely say that this has been the best experience so far in my entire career and before and anything I've done in music, putting this event with a rush to bazaar. Because, you know, we talk about lifestyle and lifestyle is appealing. You see crazy videos of a rush and pictures with all the different girls. I love, by the way, a rush, all those new pictures you had on your Facebook and the caption also. So clever, so strong, so it speaks for itself, you know, just brilliant. But um, to, to really genuinely say that to get the lifestyle, you need certain qualities. So as a former and still success coach as well, what I identify, two really powerful characteristics of people that – uh, are very important in, in working together. Number one, a punctuality, a rush, and a, also an integrity about the punctuality in means of like it's either done, uh, it's never just said not done, or it's explained, it's very classy, it's on top of things, makes it efficient, it's like a powerful machine. This thing is growing. It was going to be like a, a summit and then a conference, and now it's a convention, and we're bringing more each new time but i want to pass it to you arash and the other quality is also a true sense of possibility because many people are so caught in a win-lose model or we can do one thing but not the other that there's never a real sense of growth so it's been very pleasant since our guest is very authentic john uh keegan is here with us john uh yeah. I, I i want to pass it to you to arash and so on but i'll go fast You've, done, you've had a lot of press, and it's just not like any press. It's very impactful press, and it impacts a lot of women, and those women really appreciate you. I mean, so uh, I don't have the exact list of some of the coolest press you've had, but would you tell us about that? Yes. Um, sometime back uh, 2009, I had been coaching for a couple of years, and uh, something sort of amazing happened. I ended up... Um, the New York Times ended up contacting me to do a story on me, and uh, it was out of you know came out of nowhere really. I I didn't you know wasn't looking for that, and uh, that that story um, when they came and interviewed me, they they sent a reporter to interview me for three hours and record me audio, and he was very tough. And then they sent a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer to follow me around for four days as I went out into the field and. Uh, the idea was is I was supposed to be coaching other men, but one by one, all the guys that said they would be in the photo shoot didn't want to be on camera all of a sudden. 
So they turned to me and they said, well, show us what you got. And then so I just kind of went around and I showed them what I do. And I was meeting and connecting with women all over New York City on the fly and everyday places and the whole food mm-hmm. on the street and in the rain and all this sort of very romantic kinds of things. And uh, the photographer, uh, when he was – he we were supposed to meet two weeks earlier. And when he showed up, uh, he said, hey, look, sorry, I couldn't meet before. I was doing this thing with Obama, following him around on the trail or whatever. And then about ten minutes later, he said, uh, this is a lot more fun than hanging out with Obama because now we were talking to girls and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, So that was kind of a, a big break for me. And when they did this story, you know, I didn't know – um, you know, what it, what they would do. I mean, it's not in my control. And uh, they were going to use my real name, my real face, pictures, everything. It's going to be the world's biggest newspaper. And uh, the day that it came out, it was as much a surprise to me what it would be than to anybody. Uh, they titled it The Ladies' Man, which made me kind of laugh. But the story they, they uh, showed was really quite beautiful, and they gave it a lot of integrity. And I tried to put forth a lot of integrity because ever since I've been coaching, I've always tried to bring in um, a sense of values and integrity to meeting mm-hmm. with women, even a sense of spirituality, if you will, so that it wasn't just something, you know, small and base, but it was all the things that uh, encompass being a man. And a lot of times when people talk about pickup or they talk about dating or dating coach, a lot of uh, people can get threatened by it. And uh, when and and diminish you know the what's really happening, which is a man becoming empowered, a man coming to believe in himself, a man learning to tune into his instincts, a man learning to um, uh, learn what he, all have his needs met, a man learning about women and about what attraction is, and, and helping uh, to meet her needs. So this is what's really happening, and so that's kind of what I shared in that story, and they and they got it, and they believed me, and they took to it, and they made this beautiful little poetic piece about me. And then from there, there was an avalanche of other press that kind of continues to this day. That's very impressive, and uh, yeah, The Ladies' Man, you know, is a title that I would give you, honestly, yeah. because yeah. you have a presence that is very pleasant to women, and uh, and that really stands out, you know, stands out. Any visit you ever had, boot camps or any of that and so on, whatever girls would be around, they always like, oh, wow, who's that guy? At, com- at, uh, at the com- conferences too and so on. I want to pass it to Arash for a moment. And, uh, well, here's the next big thing. Uh, there was a question that was asked to the biggest uh, clients for American Express. They asked them, like, one question that that uh, a guy the uh, they mentioned it they asked me how to follow up with that uh something that uh had been done in the past you know if you were to pick a bodyguard or this or that, but they asked their customers if you were to put your money in the hands of someone if you were to put the things that are very dear to you, your business in the hands of someone and so on uh well uh who would you do do that with and if uh, we were to ask the question in the community, I would say again. This experience with a rush, and I detect a third quality, and I want to ask you about that rush. You know, mm-hmm. uh, another guest also that is like very strong into that, Nick Hawk, was outlining uh, principles that are almost like ancient twelve-step principles and so on. But it's just uh, like to do the footwork. So oftentimes I call you in the morning, and uh, you tell me you're in your meditation. So obviously you're the guy who does the meditation in the morning, and John Keegan did a lot of meditation. And uh, that's big. And for some, it may be this or that. And then, of course, you, you do a lot of exercise. You're on top. You also have passions. You discover new things. You know, we're talking about Adam Lyon. He's uh, fencing this weekend uh, uh, with costumes and so on. And we had him on the call. And he, then he was, like, working with leather. And, uh, and each time, it's like, you, you, you got the, the new passion with the motorcycle and so on. And you deliver mature every day. So, uh, I mean... At all levels, you're on top and you're making it happen. And that's big. And a lot of guys don't know that. And a lot of guys don't realize it's, it's a foundation without it. Uh, and w- when you're in it, it gives you a solidity. So a rush, your, your regimen. My what regimen? is your daily regimen and what allows you to be so on top? And I should outline just one last thing. And I know I spoke a lot so far, so I'll pass it to you guys. And after that, a rush, you'll ask a question <clears> to John. And uh, I'll let you lead for a bit. But 
you also pick up the phone during the meditation. To me, that's double because if you go one extreme or the other, so that's ninja shit right there. And you're efficient. <laughs> to me, that's, yeah. that's essential. And that's the unseen aspect. Sure, you see the girls, you see the results. Sometimes guys get even a little envious and so on, but no, no, the, 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 the foundation that it takes and the solidity and the work as, as a man, because it's not easy to deal with other men, you know, they like ethics, they like timing, they like manners, they like education, they like spirituality, they like inner strength and so on. So you got to know you're a man in a million, if not a billion, a rush. So your own daily regimen that allows a rush to be a rush. Okay, uh, the regimen is pretty laid out, pretty straightforward. My alarm is for 9 a.m. Last night I went to bed at 4.15 a.m., but the alarm stayed for 9 a.m. Sometimes it's 10 a.m., but I normally wake up at 9 regardless. So I wake up at 9. The first thing I do is I look at my phone <clears throat> and check the messages. Then I look at the news on Facebook to find out what's happening. Because I figure if something's happening, I need to know. My friends on Facebook know about it already. And then I um, listen to a little bit of audio. I normally wait to see how I'm feeling, and then I just punch it into YouTube, and I listen to someone talk for about five to ten minutes. And then I sit up, and I start a 20-minute meditation. Then it's a matter of changing after that and showering and doing the <clears throat> food. Then I normally go to the gym. And then I have a motorcycle lesson recently. And I come to my office and I start studying. That goes until around um, 10.30, 11 p.m. Then I go home and I watch some TV. I eat, hang out with my girls, and uh, start again. Every other day I teach jiu-jitsu. And um, sometimes I... Um, you know, do calls like this or whatever. But that's what I do. Monday through Friday. Saturdays, I do a Saturday night live lecture. Otherwise, the daytime is exactly the same. Wake up at 9, try to go to the gym. When I say try, sometimes I choose not to go to the gym and I come to the office and I sit in front of the computer and I study. And uh, I do a meditation in the middle of the day, around 4, 3 to 4 sometimes. I do another 20-minute meditation. And that's about it. And um, I think sometimes people get confused in that they think that, for example, someone says, okay, so if I meditate twice a day now and if I go to the gym and if I go study, then I can do what Arash can do. That's not true uh, because my schedule has changed before. And it's not the activity to me that creates the individual. It's the individual that creates the activity. <clears throat> and that's very important. Like you said, I pick up my phone if I'm meditating if someone calls me. And I just pick up and I say, is this an emergency? I'm meditating. Can I call you back? And normally they go, it's not an emergency. Only once someone said, uh, it's pretty bad. I said, okay, <laughs> go ahead. Tell me what's going on. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's what we bring to the activity. It's the same thing when it comes to business or pickup. Somebody else could try to copy exactly, like for example, Vince, you're a great example. You know, if someone tries to speak like you and, you know, wow, look at you. You know, I was going to walk over here and I forgot everything I was going to say because you are just, okay, you know, whatever you say, that's like, when I think about you, that, that's the line that pops up in my mind. And <laughs> um, it's the delivery. It's not the words. You, could, you might as well walk up and start speaking Chinese. And it's still going to have an effect. The person's going to look at you and try to understand what you're saying. So I think guys and women, you know, get lost in the activity. But the activity is an expression of who we are. Those are just my expressions right now. I'm sure in a year or two they'll change because they always have. Right now, mm -hmm. the expression of Arash Divazar is what I told you. When he acts in the world, he acts in two meditations, a workout at the gym, and sitting in front of the computer studying and teaching. But I'm sure that's not going to stay like that. Wow. Well, well, they're all very enriching activities. Now, it reminds me of something you said on our video call the other night. When we were talking about, you know, being tired, and I forgot how we got into it, but you said, and that was, that was very impactful. Guys, I stop, because you, you need to know how to hear the gold nuggets. And by the way, we also will have John Keegan on the video call coming up, and uh, it's even more impactful when you have the video aspect of it. But this yeah. Tuesday, Arash, uh, we're going to have, uh, who do we have as a guest this Tuesday? 
Shia, Shia Wolf. <clears throat> really, really, really beautiful woman. I told the guys tonight in the lecture, I said, whether or not you learn anything from her or not, I said, I would sit down for an hour and talk to her just because she's beautiful. I think she's worth that. She's actually a very pretty woman. So, yeah, um, she looks like she's, she's got an young. edge. And a lot oh, of... Uh, she's got more than an edge. trainer before, it, we're, we're lacking that, I think. I think that's good, that edge, I think. So, uh, she's, yeah, she's more than but, an edge. She's a wolf. She's like yeah, a yeah. shark. So, uh, so you were talking about uh, 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 the ability to just... You go back your day, you, you, you wake up the next day, and you just woke up, and you go. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. pass it back to John in just a second, but then we also have to address two other aspects. The mindset, because anybody can do it like you, Arash, but your mindset, those doorways you shared the other day, and also after that, the reverse, the polarity of that, the reward, like the juiciest stuff. That, But so there's an understanding that there's a foundation and a- every bit of success has a price to pay. And you don't, don't pay the price, you won't have the success. So. Uh, Arash, you want to pass it to John? Maybe uh, I don't know if you want to ask that question. We yeah, I have a question. I have before. a question from John. please. I have a question from John. I just punched up uh, John's name on YouTube, and I'm reading some of the titles that showed up. And one says, "Drop the agenda and watch the magic." Is that you, John? Is that the right, John? Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm very interested in your. Um, you know, some sort of explanation of that because that's very dear to how I live and I would just really like to hear another perspective of that. The title speaks to me. If you could yeah, elaborate okay. on that, yeah, that would be great. Great. Yeah, well, I, <clears throat> just listening to you talk now, it's um, uh, resonated with me because ultimately uh, it's, you were sharing that your being, the way you are, how you be, is more important than anything you do. And everything you're doing goes, uh, is coming from, you know, um, operating from the right place and you take um, the most important thing we can do is still ourselves and if it takes once a day uh, twice a day whatever it takes uh, you're constantly going back to your your center your core your source and then letting everything else you're focused on come from that which um, when we go uh, back to the meeting and connecting with women um, that that's it's all about it really has little to do with words or um, I, I, or, or what we say, it all comes from where it's coming from, the energy. And sometimes there's no words, and, and we're not doing anything specifically, and beautiful connections are made that way. Um, and drop the agenda is, is basically um, most men um, in almost every area of their life, when, when it comes to women, it's, all of their, it, it's always, uh, I need to get laid, I need to get, I need to get validation of some kind, whether it's a phone number or a smile or uh, to get laid tonight, this hour, or to, get, or to uh, get a girlfriend or everything sort of success and failure. If, if, I get, uh, if she gives me what I want, then I succeeded. If she doesn't, then I didn't. And the reality is when you operate from that place, life gets very frustrating and uh, despair enters in and you have some, some, uh, some highs and mostly lows. And usually guys, when they have that mindset, they, they quit, you know, the social practice, they quit, uh, uh, they, they, they never really get there and they become unattractive because they, they don't actually look at the person before them as a person. They're just um, someone to get their needs met. It's not a person. And then the, the woman can feel that this guy doesn't care about me. I'm just an object. This guy's not actually interested in me. And in gen- and he repels her. So it's mm-hmm. like dropping the agenda. Watch the magic simply means drop the agenda. Pay attention to her. Really be curious about who this person is. Um, and, and, and know yourself and see, see if you two match up for whatever it is you want to match up for. And really be present with that person and make being present with that person and discovering that person more important than the little needs you have in mind. And, of course, all those needs get met more when you operate from that place. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm processing it. Trans me. (laughs) (laughs) John, yeah, so... um, Amazing qualities, John, that you have. Sorry, I, I went a little slower to, to really process it. But, okay, I outline one yeah. thing, and then I lead in one thing, unless you want to ask me a question. Uh, but uh, I, I had something that came up. But, 
John, one thing that I wanted to emphasize. You know, you started yeah. at some point that thing where you were playful. Yeah. And it's very pleasant for anybody to be around. So you started to, I forgot how we got to that, but you started to say that you were indeed Vince Kelvin, and then uh, I was Lord uh, Keegan, and then we, we mixed up all the names. And, uh, but yeah. <laughs> key but things now I don't around even know that. what my name is. Yeah. You, you, did it, you did it naturally, okay? And right. uh, it's exactly aligned with a system of texting because it, it's genuinely... I get a shitload of texts. I get a text from John Keegan that just used that one silly joke where we started to mix up our name, John Kelvin and Vince Keegan and so on. But just it's two words that right away get the attention and many of the texts, but I will text John back. And uh, it's playful and it's something that lasts through time. And it's an amazing way right. to start to, to create texting continuity with a woman. Right. Yeah, we've been we've been doing that for about four or five years, I think. <laughs> yeah. Lord Kelvin, See how impactful uh, it is. Vince Keegan and all those things. Yeah. <laughs> Vince, Vince, this brings up a question that I have for you. Okay. When it comes to um, texting, you know, you you're obviously very good at it. Uh, what are some, if there are any, what are some common mistakes that people are making when they text, and what are some strong points? that you've seen that are like, okay, you know, let's say you read a text, but that was strong right there. Is there any stable yeah. points in it that you can, you can call out and go, these, these as a general rule are very strong points and these are weak points in text. I'm just going to re outline what uh, John just said, because the worst mistake in texting is texting with an agenda because it will be felt and nothing is ever organic. Women spend a shitload of time on the phone and if you get curious, and I'm sure you are rushed with all those women around, when they text each other, they violate every single other rules that are taught in the community. Their texts are super long, not spaced, it's too wordy, they insist, they will text their girlfriend one, two, three, four, five, six times. Imagine a guy texting a girl six times because she's not replying or, or as a first intro, but... It comes, it's a form of entertainment, it's a form of significance, it's a form of, uh, uh, what, connecting, uh, and it's also priority to what stands out. So you got to be much more unique than the rest, and the first way in which you really stand out is by not having an agenda. Now, you're a man, you cannot cancel yourself, so you got to have less of an emphasis on the agenda than other guys. Or then you do the work, you go all the way. Like John, John, you got to talk. You had an experience, I think, for four years, right? You you went meditating or something. Uh, I've been meditating on and off for many years, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But um, not like uh, it's a little bit different than um, a lot of other people do it. Um, I'll do something similar usually in the evening before I go to sleep. I like to spill my mind. And then I even look at just uh, being social as, you know, I would talk about removing an agenda. I literally look at being social, the act of being social uh, on purpose as a meditation. Um, I like that. Than med med meditating just to still the my mind. The point of focus is important, yeah. right? The point of focus, too many guys, if they, the point of focus is overly on the girl. They're right. destabilized. It's too much investment. It's an imbalance. But That's right. I like to also come full circle, and I think that on the other hand, to, to bring it all together and then pass it back to you guys, whether it's texting, one of the edge you can have in texting or in person, is to drop the agenda and go as fast as you can based on skills and experience. The skills, you get them by practicing basics again and again till you become super good. If you read somewhere, oh, ask her if she would uh, pick a bodyguard, a guy to fuck, and uh, a third person. Okay, interesting concept. Right, 20 other options of pick one of this, one of this, and one of that. Do it. How many guys are going to do it? Very few. That's your point of focus. You get good at that. You expand your mindset. Expanding your mindset is listening to stuff like that again and again and again. Till one day you find yourself talking more like it. And 
the goal is to talk even better than it. Okay, you take that as a reference to go beyond, not below. Every guy goes below, and then they go below so low that it's like by the ankle, and you stumble on 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 on, on their masturbation and their 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 delusion and and all of that. So I like to also go full circle, and you go faster on the other hand because if you go detached and fast at the same time, it's double your power. So that's yeah. where you go. You can also go full agenda, full force. But in a way, you're being authentic and uh, you have uh, dropped the agenda. And, and you go and you say, if you think I'm talking to you because I'm flirting with you, you're absolutely right. I know this could sound like a pickup line. I don't do those. I find them very, very, I don't know. They're not, they're not real enough. Like I'm talking to you right now because that's what you make me feel. Look at your body. Look at you. I know. I go fast. You. Yeah. You don't look like the type who would go slow. You know, and it's like boom, like so... But it's detached. And then to go back to something more meditative, like a frame of learning. And you got to know, it's like driving a, a, a stick shift, a car. Uh, for example, if at times what's happening is really under your control, name it more as it is. And focus and go, yeah, that's it. I'm fucking three girls right now. Wow, that feels good. I'm the man. And don't overly brag or dwell. Because then it's about what, what, what else can you do? Or can you make that work? How can you make it better? But then... Um, there's also moments where you go, hey, you know, it's a learning experience. What is there to enjoy and grow from? Okay. And the guy's only focused on like, oh yeah, I got my dick inside a vagina. A vagina. I'm the king of the world at last. It's really too, uh, too shallow. Okay. But appreciate everything. Like I, I, I always talk about this moment. The bus is leaving. You're running towards the bus because you notice they're getting in, but there's no way they're not going to stop the bus. So, and she notices you and you make it obvious, you go like big gestures, like, yeah, I was looking at you and you shred your shoulder, like, well, we'll never see each other again. The bus departs and your eyes are caught for a moment and that moment is so strong that it stays with her. But it's been a long week. I'm a little tired. I don't want to take too much time. So we pass it back. John, question to Arash. Yes. You guys are getting to know each other. So what genuine question would you have for Arash? Well, yeah, I think um, one of the things we've been, the, the key topics of today's call has been uh, authenticity and dropping the agenda. And from what I know about Rash, uh, he's a very instinctual person, you know, uh, so I just, which is really what dropping the agenda is, is tuning into your own instincts as a, as a man and responding from them. And i just like to get his take on uh, how, you know, we've got a little bit of your team, but uh, how important is it to be tuned into your instincts? And what can a regular guy who, who's overanalyzing everything in his life, what can he do to start really responding from his natural instincts? Okay. This question, um, I have a certain insight on, which I think is a little different than what most people think about. Um, it's not unique to me because I've come across it before, but let's just go over this. I think we have to redefine instincts for mankind because, I have dogs, and they don't have to learn that when they smell the grass, they're going to pee. They don't have to learn to bark when someone comes by the door, right? They know to lift their legs up after a certain time to pee as they get older. And there are certain instincts they have. When they get old enough and they smell another dog, they, they want to go hunt. Those are instincts that animals have. Every animal, birds, have an instinct to build a nest. They don't have to be taught how to build a nest. They just go build a fucking nest. Mankind, Homo sapiens, when he's been observed, it's been noted that he actually possesses no instinct besides grabbing the titty and sucking it when you put it close to his mouth when he's a baby. Grabs, pinches, and sucks. But if you let Homo sapiens go by himself, at no point does an instinct kick in where he knows what to do. He's just one loss, just nothing. But he does have something else, which is he has intelligence, and thus we rule the animal kingdom, and look at where we are. I'm using a cell phone in San Jose talking to you guys in a room, uh, controlling the temperature. We control the elements. And one of the problems is that the confusion becomes people think, well, you know, I should think less and use my instincts. Now, I truly understand what that means when it's said in a proper way. 
uh, by, by an instructor that knows what they're talking about. I get, I get what they're saying. But for me to answer the question, I would have to define my terms and say these are my terms. So my terms are instinct, and then I'll answer the question the way I, I understand it. Um, my, instincts, I don't have any that I can count on. Um, intelligence, I have a very high degree of it. Now, having said that, I don't get lost in my mind. I don't let my thoughts take over. And I trust, if we're talking about instinct, I trust my split-second decision-making. I trust my perception. I know I can look at something and know right then what needs to be done. If there's enough data there, I'll know. If I can't make a split-second decision, like immediate decision, that means there's not enough data in my environment for me to make a decision. So at that moment, I have two choices. One, I can use the data that's already there and deduce from there and go, if A is here, B is here, C is here, I probably can predict D, E, whatever. Or I can step back and go, based on the data that's here right now, there is still not enough for me to decide, and I don't want to play the guessing game, so I'm not going to decide. I reserve my judgment until I have more information. Now, this has really helped me. From the outside, when people look at me and listen to me speak, they go, man, I think this guy just is constantly living off of, in quote, his instincts, and he just kind of goes for it. I do. I do go for it. But I truly believe that I, I'm very aware of my intelligence. I think I'm extremely intelligent, actually, and that's what makes me, in the human world, kind of a good player of the game in life. You know, I, everything I touch, I turn into gold, not because I have a great instinct for it, but I have a great observation for it. So I think people can get out of their heads and live in quotes more instinctually, which is, I think, an experience they're trying to go for, which is not be so caught up in thinking and agendas and, and, and oh, okay, if this happens, then, you know, they're just caught up in their head. They can re replace that by perceiving, looking at what's going on right there and teaching themselves, regaining the ability that they had as a child which is to look at something and see it for as purely as it is, not what it should be, not what somebody else said it is, not what they hoped it was, but actually see it for what it is. And I think that this is what I'm actually doing at a very fast pace that looks to others like I'm moving instinctively. I used to before think, man, I must have an incredible instinct. Then I studied more on instincts in humans, and I came across this data that made sense to me. We don't have instincts like animals do. Animals have instincts, which is something in nature kicks in at some point without any external influence from any other animal in there, and they know what to do. Pigeons have an instinct. Sharks have an everything. Have an instinct. But humans, they're just lost. They don't know anything. But they've got this big old brain, and, and the sense of spirituality in them is very strong. So I would like to clear that up because I know that it's something from the outside that people don't know me very well. They think that, and so I think they go the wrong way sometimes. I think people should think. I think they should use their intelligence a lot more. I do, I do a lot of thinking. I just don't think about stupid things. I don't waste my time worrying about things that are not in my control. I don't waste my time uh, doubting myself. I don't waste my time uh, fearing things. I use my thoughts creatively. I look and go, what do I want to create? And I think about it. Outside of that, if a thought enters my head, like I'm learning how to ride a motorcycle recently, and there's a lot of doubts and things that come up when you get on them when you don't know what you're doing. When the thought enters, I just, I literally just go, no, and I stop thinking about it. So I have the ability, and I think maybe we all do, uh, but I definitely have had the ability my entire life to just not think about it if I don't want to. And it looks like a superpower to me because I see people, it just happened today with one of my girls, and she was just so in her head. And I realized I didn't want to talk her out of her head because then I'd just be talking to that problem. So I just turned to her. I said, you know, I just want you to just understand something for a moment. I said, you know this, this issue you're having right now? I just want you to know that I actually don't have that issue in life. And she looked at me. I said, I don't. We were driving. I said, I don't. I, I want you to know I've never had it. I don't have it today, and I won't have it tomorrow. I said, because I don't think like that. And then she's like, well, I'm not like that normally. She goes, normally I'm I said, but that's the difference. I stopped her. I said, that's the difference. You're saying you're normally not like this. I said, please listen to me. I'm telling you, I'm never like that. My mind doesn't do that with me. I don't, I don't allow my mind to think like that. It's not a thought process that I engage in. I drove about 10 seconds, 
And she turned to me. She goes, I'm done with a smile. I said, you're done with what? Hmm. She goes, I don't have that problem anymore. I said, really? She goes, yeah. I said, how? What happened? She goes, you know what? Honestly, I just said, if you can do it, I can do it too. And I realized that I was just making a big deal out of something that wasn't a big deal. I said, exactly. Now let's get on with the day. So I, I took a lot of time, but there you go. That's my answer. Wow. That's but at the same point. time, I, I, those, those yeah. are two brilliant meditations. So, sorry, John, I'll pass it right back to you. But two brilliant meditation as you were talking about going back to that time as a child where there was no meaning and just seeing what, what is for what it is. I was kind of following mm-hmm. along and I had a glimpse of it and just warmth all over the body, just like a, a reassurance, instant reassurance. So the, the, the two things you outlined right there would be very, very potent uh, uh, meditations. <laughs> and uh, why? It, it, also, when you outline like how you, what you don't focus on, I thought, okay, imagine the absence of that. And what's left is really, really, really pleasant. So, uh, wow, thank you, Rush. And uh, I'm looking at the time, but we'll pass it, John. The theme this year at the Global SLR, uh, we, we're optimizing all aspects of it. We're optimizing the teaching formats so it's more dynamic, you know. So there's this hands-on, there's like, there's like partying, and it's, it's, it's a blend when you go back and forth between you just heard lectures and now you boom, you're in the middle of a party with like real Hollywood hotties and so on. It's, it's very impactful. And then we dissect these round tables. We're doing a new thing. We're going to bring a whole other batches of coaches, guys that are spending a lot of time in field, one-on-one or boot camps, to help at night. Okay? So this way we still have our 12 pillar speakers, but we're also going to have assistance at night. You have access to the venue on Friday or on Saturday. Even better, you have access to the best rooms and so on upstairs uh, where all the, 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 the what tables are and so on. Uh, so, But the one thing that we're doing also to constantly stretch the envelope, what is it that really can help the guys that has, in your own opinion, not been verbalized today yet? Up to date. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so what you're saying, ask me what's the, what, something that could really uh, help them uh, yeah, you know, and... because I, I, like listening to to Rush, listening to you, it's a mind expansion automatically yeah. as we have that mind expansion, new thoughts come into play. So I know that when you teach, you have the realizations that you're sharing with everybody at the time, but you also have deeper realizations. Sometimes they're too deep to be to be incorporated, but they're part of your own inner understanding that you would rarely share. Or sometimes they're just the next level that they need to be exposed to. So with a really open mind, I, uh, yes. I, w- I would like to ask the question also to Rush after that. So there's a sense of uh, newness, but at the same time, we cannot, the truth is the truth. So, but in your own opinion, yes. what's, so what's I, the I, missing link? Another simple way to say it. The missing yes, link yes. in your own opinion, the one that's not oh, been yeah. verbalized yet. Okay, just very quickly, when um, you hear us speaking, we're all getting very deep, and uh, that's because we're all um, we're all masters of an art form. But at the end of the day, it boils down to the lightness and the fun in the moment. So there's there's a depth in everything we do, and at the same time, it's as light it's as light as a feather, or as or as, or as silly as a clown, and and that's that's sort of this 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 balance we find in every moment. Uh, a mindset that I've really taken on recently uh, is just these uh, three words, of all time. And when I think of my own life and, and when you can think of your own life, think of this as being the greatest life of all time, this being the greatest moment of all time, this being the greatest day of all time, this being the greatest conversation of all time. Imagine seeing it that way, the way that we're talking now instead of, uh, oh, this is just another okay, mediocre conversation. I'm just a mediocre person. Uh, This is just a shitty moment. This is a tomorrow will be better. But imagine seeing yourself as the greatest of all time, the greatest uh, with someone who has something to contribute to all time. And I think that's a mindset that can really take uh, anyone from feeling um, less than excellent to excellent.
that's essential and beautiful. Thank you, John. Thank you. And guys, when you're listening to those recordings, you know, trance happens all the time. We we, we quickly get like in a train of thought. So, but stay alert, take notes, reflect, incorporate, stretch your own mind because we want this to be a collective effort and impact. That's why we're putting together the global SLR. And uh, before I pass the question to Arash as well, I want to quickly, once again, uh, thank everybody who's already coming. This is the highest registration we've ever had for an event of that type since 2007 when I did the very first one. The best venue, the system refined, and we're going all the way. It's just, you know, I, I'm at a, we're at a place, uh, we, we don't do things half-assed. So, for example, mm-hmm. we bring back uh, part of the tradition. Uh, everybody will get a little pamphlet. Uh, color cover and uh, mm-hmm. contact of all the speakers and a little bit about every speaker and there will be some content in it and so on. So we're adding all those different elements. All the speakers have been invited to put something on inside the goodie bags, a DVD, a CD, anything, a book of their mm-hmm. choice that we pass to everyone and so on. And uh, mm-hmm. it's basically 24. It's going to be 48 hours uh, plus the Friday, 72 hours. It's like... Uh, you're going to a rock concert, but that's the one of the pickup community, seduction community, lifestyle, everything, uh, because it's going to be nonstop. I quickly take you guys to the weekend. You will arrive 6 p.m. It's in the heart of Hollywood. First amazing thing about that area, I travel a lot. You go to certain cities, every major city in the world, hotels, super high flights, uh, reasonable to major cities, but L.A., lowest flights, plus also uh, the advantage in Hollywood, you, you can reside and lodge for like a fragment of other cities. There's, and there's always ample space. So uh, that's easy. 6 p.m., the door open. On Friday, we're in a nightclub called the Bardo that has two sections, one phenomenal VIP section and the other section, a stage and everything, a light, sound system. And we'll kick it in gear with a rush, myself as an MC, Nick Hawk, and you'll hear speakers. It will be the VIP room. And for three and a half hours, the speakers are going to, on one side, drill, prepare for the evening. On the other side, lecture and uh, expand your minds and we'll rotate. And then everybody goes down to the nightclub where we bring a whole batch of trainers to keep an eye on you, to observe you so they can give you feedback the next day, to demo and so on. Then we come back the next morning, 9.30 a.m., and the speakers are on the big stage. It's a theater, 2,000 seats. Not only you'll see the speaker live, but behind that huge screen, and there's screens all around the room. There's even an upstairs section and so on. And uh, we'll even do a chakra clearing with James Hyman and all the speakers contributing to clear your energy right away, nonstop. We're in the venue uh, and so on. And uh, after that, the VIPs will depart while everybody goes to dinner. And when you go to dinner, you're right on Hollywood Boulevard. It's packed with women. There's little nightclubs and so on. You can have fun for a few hours since you've been in Hollywood. On the streets, some of the trainers will come with you. VIPs, Platinum, they will come to my place. We have an entire area that will be blocked for us with dinner for the speakers and the participants and mingling, asking them questions. They will all like add stuff, make speeches and so on. Nick Hawk will be there, too, signing his book, a book release for me as well. And then uh, we'll have a rush for two hours that is going to just – and when he, when he makes that statement, I'm going to blow your mind, you, you know the man means it. And it, it's just – it will be one exclusive share or something that you will never hear before or after, only for the VIPs. And then we have a party bus to prepare – the guys uh, for the evening in which Bad Boy and a guy who dan- uh, teaches dancing will be there and so on, prepare you to pull girls in there. And then after that, we go back to the venue where we're doing a large-scale pink carpet event where we bring in a lot of Hollywood celebrities and talents and artists and movie makers and so on. So, boom, you're in that environment. This, this, you don't even go to the, the, the club. The club comes to us. Paparazzi is outside and so on. You can invite girls that night. And then we restart on Sunday, and Sunday it's mini workshops. You spend time with Bad Boy, learning how to go direct, stop girls, boom, right there on the street, fast pull, and so on. Then you move and you study with Hypnotica, and then with Arash, and then me, and then John, and the list goes on. You got to go to Global SLR to see it. And the tickets, we have a sliding scale. We're going to make three more VIPs available 
at full price, but only three. And then uh, you have until the 14th of July before there's a price increase. There's another one at the end of the month as well. So get your tickets ASAP. I pass it to Rush if he wants to also, as we're putting this together, say a word about it. And then uh, the question for Rush would be, well, what is it that you have not shared yet that's just totally out there that, uh, okay, you get, the, you get the idea. I'm getting a little tired. I've been with that sleep for 48 hours, but I pass it to you. What is the question? Uh, the question is, what is it that's not been taught yet that, in your own opinion, is the silent missing link, the thing that no one has seen and done yeah. that uh, I get will it. create the change? Yeah, uh, it's going to be really simple to hear it, maybe difficult to do, but here are the words in my head. If you looked throughout the day, you would see this. Everybody needs to shut the fuck up. End quote. Now, this little <laughs> statement is so fucking powerful for me. You know, I said, be the best, fuck the best. Now the world is chanting it. Everybody needs to shut the fuck up. We'll really handle a lot of the problems that people have. So if, if you take a look at how much, and I, I say you as a general term, I'm not speaking to you personally, but a person takes a look at how much datums, how much information, how much opinions, their heads are clogged with this shit. All kinds of experts, right? You could go into the bookstore and this diet book says eat carbs. The one next to it says no carbs. One says eat meat. The right next to it says no meat. Then one says fast. The next one says you can't. One says vegetarians are the best thing. The next one says if you're vegetarian, you're going to die, right? All contradictory data everywhere. When I look at the world, I say everyone needs to shut the fuck up right now. And then I go, because I can look for myself. I can decide for myself. So everybody needs to shut the fuck up. There is no authority of my life outside of myself. There are many suggestions. The people I want to learn from, I seek them out. If you're not somebody that I came to seek out your information, then you need to shut the fuck up all around. Now, you could be my family member. You could be my mom and dad. You could be God. You could be devil. You could be Buddha. You could be Jesus Christ. You all need to shut the fuck up right now. Why? Because I didn't come knocking on your door. I don't want unsolicited advice about my life. I'm intelligent enough to, to look and decide for myself what is right and what is wrong. As I purchased this beautiful bike, I was told by my um, bike instructor, he's like, I don't think you could ride that bike. I said, okay, thank you. He said, you shouldn't buy it yet. I said, okay, thank you. So I went and I bought the bike. And I told the guys, listen, I just got my permit and I've been practicing on a 200-pound bike. This is an 800-pound bike. But I want to ride this fucking thing to my house. And they're like, okay. I said, let's do this. I said, do you mind if someone follows me? They're like, yeah. I said, let's go to that parking lot first. I got on this fucking beast. And uh, <laughs> the moment I made a turn, I fell and my leg got pinned under the bike. I, swore, you know, I, I moved out of it, got out of it, and I rescued my leg. Then I turned around and I said, I don't think I can ride this bike. <laughs> so after I purchased it, the, my bike is now sitting at the bike shop in display after I fucking bought it. But something very important happened. I was very happy the rest of the day, very happy, as I realized how important it was for me, for me to discover that I couldn't ride that bike. Because if I hadn't got on the bike and tried it, I would have gone home and I would have had a whole conversation the whole day with myself. God, I wonder if I could have done that. You know, I, need, I think I could have, man. I should have. Maybe tomorrow I'll do it. And the next day, I would have showed up probably and tried to do what I did that day. That means my day, I would have lost one whole day because I would have been in a, in a debate versus myself. There was only one way to do it. Everybody needs to shut the fuck up. I'm going to get on the bike and figure it out. Now, as I say that, it should be understood that 
I know my capabilities. I didn't fucking go and put a gun to my head and say, Russian roulette, let me fucking find out if I'm going to die. That's not what happened. I knew that I'd be okay. I knew I might get hurt, and I was willing to uh, have the risks taken. But that's what I think is missed from everybody. Everybody needs to shut the fuck up. If someone's going to the global SLR convention, they're going because they look at the people that are going there, and they say, I want to learn from this man. I want to know what this man has to say, and I'm going there to find out information and see the truth for myself. Now, that person is going to do very well in life. Otherwise, you're walking around with so many ideas, so many contradictions. In fact, when you talk about meditation, just punch it up on uh, Google and see how many different styles of meditation there are. And every single week, I get someone say to me, so what kind of meditation do you do? I said, well, I, I don't share that with anybody. I shared it with my seven girls, and that's it. They're the only ones that know what I do. That's it. Why? Well, you can figure it out yourself. They said, do you recommend any books? I say, no, I don't. They say, whatever, I say, I don't. I said, listen, I, you can't walk my path. I can give you a stable point. Read. Read what? Whatever you want. Study. Study what? Whatever you want. Find people who you believe in and study under them. Who are they? You find them. You can't live my life. So I've told myself, you need to shut the fuck up, dude. You're not a fucking expert. I'm very good at what I do. But I'm very, very good because everything I do is a natural expression of who I am. And today, more than ever, something happened for me about a week ago that my whole entire life changed. It was just a moment. It was a moment. I woke up and I listened to some YouTube debate. And I, the guy said one sentence. He said, there is no such thing as a non-racist. Now, that doesn't mean anything out of context. But when he said that, concepts just listed off of my head. And I felt like, like, a, like a, if you had a square, uh, a circle square, you know, square, and all the, all the areas of the square, they opened up, and whatever was inside came out. I knew something shifted in me. I didn't know what it was. But I do know since then, my mind has been quiet, very quiet. Because when it starts to pick up, I even tell my mind, everybody needs to shut the fuck up, including you. I can observe for myself. I know that sooner or later, this life comes to an end as I know it. I'm not trying to prevent that. I'm trying to live. I'm trying to live. And I want every moment. You know, when I was eating today, I was eating Mexican food. I think it was $6 and something cents. And I looked at Electra, who was sitting in front of me. I said, do you see what an amazing life we live? I said, look at this fucking food. Look at this Coke bottle. I go, man, I don't want to be anywhere else doing anything right now. This is it. This is my fucking life. I go, it took me 38 fucking years to finally say, I'm now actually living. I'm not trying to figure out living. I'm not trying to uh, do something about living. I'm not conception. I'm just living. I'm here. And every day is fucking beautiful, and I'm good with it. There's good things, bad things. All of it is fine with me. I could give a shit. Everybody needs to shut the fuck up, including myself. So I'll stop now. Wow. Arash, you know, it's funny. I'm sorry if I made a crazy sound, but um, Ivy came out of nowhere, and she handed me a cup, and she goes, she could tell I was getting a little sleepy. And you said, look at that bottle of Coca-Cola, and she handed me a glass of Coca-Cola. I, so in my ear, I heard Coca-Cola, and my, on my other hand was a cup of Coca-Cola given to me. So before we pass it back, we do one more round, and uh, I want to answer that question real fast, uh, and then that will be it. We'll, we'll restate some of the options for those who want to join the, 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 the convention. But uh, meanwhile, let's give some, one thing practical. I answer the question, and then John, I pass it back to you, and then uh, John to Arash. One practical exercise that guys listening can put into practice and maybe with three on these calls for the next three days, you hear the three exercises and you do one per day. And three days from now, you're three times richer and you're impacted by uh, our presence and you're listening. But <clears throat> personally, I love to contemplate a reality at a magical standpoint. That is divine order. I view reality can be experienced at four levels. The bottom one is the victim level. Victim level, you feel that something went wrong, that something shouldn't have happened, something is off with others, with you, 
and you feel as if you had been done wrong by yourself, others, or life itself, and different layers of life either that you were done wrong by your peers or by, uh, I mean, uh, your uh, the economy or whatever. It could be more like at a level of universe and so on. Next level up is that you decide to stand up, you decide to fight. But it presupposes still that there is something that needs to be overcome and so on, like a challenge. And if it juices you, great. If it results, it's only the result that matters in the change. Sure, well, let's dig deeper in that direction. But in my own experience, it's, it's only been at best a back and forth where there's a few steps forward and then back because you still subject to presupposing that shouldn't be and you go against and with and after a while you get confused and you have downfalls too. And then there's divine order in which there's never a mistake and everything that you need is present right here and right now and it's perfect as is. And you want to be cocky in that direction. We're always too shy in contemplating miracles, massive change, instant change and so on. We still are pre-programmed by uh, what prejudice and uh, 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 a form of uh, uh, what thinking, uh, pre- uh, not presupposition, but uh, you know, like it could happen like uh, uh, we're not at cause, at char- in charge. But in that divine order, everything is there. So here, how it applies, in my own opinion, with women. Nothing ever went wrong. You're the perfect person at the perfect time, at the perfect place. And women are not there to challenge you, shit test you. And all of that is dismissed in those moments of living in that reality. And the other two realities, it's very, it's very uh, much real and it's, uh, it's inevitable at that higher level. Everything that women tell you, you do two things with them. First, you learn from them because they're telling you how to do it and you do it like a real man. For example, imagine every guy has an agenda, as John was saying. Suddenly, you, you're right there, present in the moment with her up to a point where you have so much abundance of pussy in your life and you know you could get so much and you know you're so much stronger than it that also you could do with that and you could thrive with that, you know? And you have all those options and they grow and more options, bring more options. Every combination, you can handle it. Then if you're with a girl and you know you're going to sleep with her that night, you can look at her and your heart knows it because you're not, it's not a line. You mean it. You can tell her, yeah, but you know, let's not do anything too crazy too soon. And she can tell that you mean it. In that moment, she will be open to doing crazy things sooner because you just demonstrated you don't have a fucking agenda. Yeah, since it was such a great topic that uh, John brought. And uh, you learn from them. So what they, they tell you, like, oh, but I don't know you. You learn those things. And you don't only say that. You say it and you do dual direction. You step in and you go, that's crazy. I don't even know you. And boom, that's when you grab her. And uh, then the other thing you got to realize that everything that happens with women, you're always winning. You're either having a moment to make out an amazing night of love, making something crazy, a sexual fantasy, fetishes, lived and whatever. But you could also be a great, pleasant connection and uh, without using it as an excuse, appreciate even situations that had a little peak but didn't go really far and you, you had to make out at a nightclub. You don't need to sleep with her after. You can, but it's not like, oh, my God, I don't understand. We're doing so well. We had to make out and so on. And you know that you have moments when it's, it's good practice, okay? Even if she didn't show, show up and went all the way, she came up to your place. It's better to learn it that way than to learn it just in a book. And then there are some moments where you, it's going to stir you. It's going to fucking hurt you. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be shocked. And it's all good vaccination, you want the things that you used to fear to happen to you, so then you outgrow them. And then nothing has any power over you uh, that women can do other than what you can do. And then you can, you can try things. You can go, fuck it, let me try. I'm going to be in love. Fuck it, let me try. I'm going to do Fuck it, let me try. I'm going to break all world records of how many women to be with and so on. So, John, one exercise concrete for the guys, and then a rush one. And then me, I'll simply uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep it simple and also... Uh, will we state uh, the uh, global SLR? Yes. Uh, to boil it all down, uh, this is a game of risk. It's an emotional risk that we're taking. And in order to grow, we have to constantly be taking uh, risk. And when it, there's really, for a man, no, uh, no greater risk than connecting with women. It seems all the things we want to do, no matter who the man is, it comes back down to this 
apprehension, this fear that, that to break the ice with a woman, the simplest thing. Uh, and for a lot of men, they get stuck right there. But so, then when we get past that, there's a new risk to take. What if I want to get personal with her? And then what if I want to be vulnerable? I actually just want to be exposed. I want to be me. Uh, that, that's a risk. I want to uh, ask her on a date. That's a risk. I want to kiss her. That's a risk. I want to, uh, I want to have a threesome with her. That's a risk. I want to marry her. I want to do this. I want to tell her that I want to have an open relationship. It's a risk. It's all emotional risk. And in that, we're always afraid to lose the same exact thing. And that thing is uh, we're, we're afraid to not get her approval. We're afraid to not be accepted. We're afraid to be rejected. I want to give you a simple exercise that every single man listening to this call can do every single day and should do. And I want you to say, hi. Uh, you know, everyone's at their own place. So maybe some guys are like, hey, uh, that's not for me. But I would say this is for everybody. I want you to say hi to five women tomorrow uh, or today, as soon as you listen to this. I go out and say hi to them. Literally, just walk past someone walking down the street and wave at them. Now, if I said lift your left hand and just wave it, that's very easy to do. Any man can do it. That arm works proper. And then, but then if you uh, add a woman in front of him, all of a sudden he gets flipper arms. Like it doesn't work quite right. It's because of the emotional risk that he might be rejected. And uh, just by simply doing that, waving at them and saying hi and keep walking, just by doing that, you, you start to detach from outcome. And, and, then, and then you start to um, stop seeking her approval in that moment. And then you might start to have fun. And you're breaking the ice within yourself. You're warming up and you're getting outside of your head. That's how a, a simple exercise that I would start my own day with when I hit the streets in New York, when I walk outside, I say hi to the first five people I see that are women. And then you can go further than that and take the next risk. So that's an exercise I would do is literally walk down the street, just say hi to people, just wave at them as they're on a park bench or wherever you live, wherever the people are, and just do that simple exercise. Uh, and then you can ramp it up from there and go up and give five people direct compliments. Uh, it's on and on. And then you can ramp it up from there and get into five uh, conversations. And, and, and then you can state your intention five times. You can constantly do this uh, pushing yourself forward and taking these emotional risks and understanding the only thing you're afraid to lose is someone else's acceptance. And the most important acceptance we need is our own. So that's my, that's my spiel for now. Yeah, guys do it. And I was strong. I was still, yeah, it's so true. What we need an ongoing exercise is approve of yourself more and more and more for you. A rush what's one exercise the guys can do right away. It's very simple. Let me. Yeah. Mine's going to be quite simple. An exercise you could do right right now, by when I get off the phone, is take a look at your life and see what you love to do. You need to start doing something that you like. This is not an effort, right? Sometimes we're like, I don't really know what I like to do. Yeah, you do. Whatever the fuck that is. You need to start living your life and enjoying your life. Let me say this because sometimes I just get this intuition about shit. So I always assume that when I'm talking, I'm talking to sane adult individuals who don't go around doing stupid shit like hurting people. Okay? So if you're one of those idiots listening, then go turn yourself in. Otherwise, I'm assuming it's a sane individual listening to me. Yeah, I felt like doing something. No, no, don't be an idiot. What I'm saying is take a look to see what you enjoy in your life. And that should be your next activity. I don't even eat food that is not enjoyable to my taste buds. And that changes every day. I take a look in the moment and I go, what do I want right now? This is a very interesting exercise. If I'm with a girl and they say, you want to go eat? I say, sure. We start going to say, what do you want? I said, I don't know yet. I'm going to drive and I'm going to keep looking at the restaurants and one of them is going to look really good. And that changes every day. It changes in the different hours in the day. So... It's very important for me to enjoy my life. 
Because after all, everything that I'm studying or have been studying and everything I ever did, the women in my life, everything has been so I can enjoy my life. But it doesn't have to be in a certain condition so I enjoy it. I can start enjoying it now. So the exercise for you is very simple. See what it is that you want to do, any activity. I, I, I explained eating so you see it's not like you have to go skydiving, right? Maybe it's driving your car. Maybe it's listening to your favorite music. Maybe it's working out, maybe it's walking or running or spending time with your cat or dog or having a conversation or even reading a poem. You know, I spent about two weeks just listening to poems. That was my study. Why? Because I love poets. I love poetry. And so whatever that is, your exercise is to do it and enjoy it and watch how things will change all around you. Okay? That's a very simple thing, and I think if you did that, you would start changing the frequency of your life, the way you feel, the way you look at the world, it's not so gloomy and so dark, okay? Yes, there's a lot of bad things going on, and that's what it is. But at the same time, you know, if you just take a look at your environment right now, here's an exercise. You, you look right now where you are. Just look around. And look around and find something around you that you enjoy. There's, there's, that's your environment. You could have a couch you like, a TV, a video game. I'm looking around what I see. You know, um, I have a chess set. Like, these things are, are valuable things, and we don't see them anymore. Always looking for the next pleasure that's not within our grasp. So find what is within your grasp and on a daily basis, make it your ritual to do the things you love to do. And then you're going to do much better with women too, guaranteed. That's the answer. Man, I feel really, really good. I, I like to process everything when hearing it right away. And uh, this call has really, really, really enriched me. I was, I'm about to embark on seven-day training, and I was hoping for a day of rest today, and I didn't get it, so I was stressing out just a touch. And then hearing everything I heard, wow, major change, you know. Uh, I could give the very simple exercise to do the exercises that you just heard. Because it's a great exercise to do the exercise. And it's an exercise that nobody does. Very few will do the exercise of doing the exercise. But I want to give some ninja stuff for, um, you know, you, you start, like John was saying, and after a while, for those who are a little bit more advanced, you hear certain answers mm -hmm. from women. But there's a type of women that walk the street, a, a type of men and women, that they don't want to be bothered. They just like, mm -hmm. and women get pretty good, actually, at giving that sense of like, okay, I don't want to be looked at. You guys, you know what I'm talking about. There's always those women, they walk, and they give you a sense of, I don't want to be looked at, or I don't want to be talked at, and so on. Me, I like to fuck with people. Not in a mean way, but in a fun way. So something that's super fun to do is to observe that and to realize, well, it's, it's not you. If, you. if you're so new that you take it personally, you think, okay, oh, she, she doesn't look happy because of me. It's, it's not the case. You're not the center of the universe. We're not. So at the same time, uh, you realize it's probably because of all of the imbeciles that came before. And then you start to observe men. Second part of the exercise, first you notice those types of women, then you observe men making stupid-ass comments to women. It will make you grow real fast because you've got to be aware of what not to do. And look at guys everywhere, the, those who look in this disgusting way, and they, they're not even talking to her. A woman enters the room, instead of having your eyes on the girl. Look at the guys, how they respond, and they don't respond like that. So now you go to them, step number three, and you go, hey, forgive the interruption, okay? Yeah, uh, but I couldn't help but notice you have such a good don't-talk-to-me expression on your face. You had to work at it. And I just had to compliment you, and then you take steps back, like you, that, that's going to be it. I just had to compliment you on that. It's a, it's a unique compliment. It's genuine. But, but you know what? I don't blame you. And then you walk back into her, and you start to list every dumbass thing that guys would do. I don't blame you. And you even point them in the fucking distance. The more beautiful she is, the more you're going to notice in a crowded place stupid-ass guys looking at her. And you point that. And when you do it well, it's something you got to do it 50 times before you really know the impact of it. And then a couple more hundred times, and then it becomes one of your classic. And you take those girls that everybody would be thinking, oh, she looks suspicious, this, she's that. And you fucking break them and melt them. And then it gives you a cockiness that after a while is so strong and so contagious that women will feel it. And if you want something, who are you going to go to? You're going to go to somebody that has the capacity. You're not going to, or you would quickly get suspicious. Let's say you, you hire a computer tech and suddenly the guy shows up and he's like, hey, what's up, man? And he looks like he's half drunk. You'd be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Did I, am I really going to the best person for that? So after a while, women who want quick, fun, fuck, women who want crazy things, women who cannot find a guy that will give them like amazing sex, 
some kind of connection, but then also understand she has a career or, or, or a woman. But then they sense, oh, wow, this guy has it. But what they're really sensing is like a second layer of your cockiness that's doubling in its impact because now you know that you know and you know that where every other guy would fail, you would succeed. Then it's with you. And then after that, you go through life with less and less neediness because you know how much you can have. And then you mature into that and it really propels you uh, to places that to most will remain unknown. So discover those places with us. Thank you, John Keegan. John you're part of this group because we uh, decided, you know, uh, let's only do it with people that are pleasant to work with, that whose material is super powerful, whose dedication has been permanent, and uh, you know everything else and above. So that, thank you for being part of this group and uh, yeah. bringing bringing yourself to this. You know, you're always thank been, you so been much. there, very yeah, genuine. As a man, me. also thank you. You know, in moments of distress, you. You did the classic, uh, classic thing of checking in, not too worried, and being a presence there, which is very powerful with women, very rare in men, and it's a great quality of the alpha male to, to have that, that sensitivity, that awareness. You know, it would have been easy to say, oh, wow, Vince is going crazy, blah, blah, blah. But no, you, you were part of the, basically no one who said, okay, let me check in with him. Jim Mar- James Marshall yeah. did that too. James Marshall was passing through L.A. and he could have gone the quick flight, but he said, no, no, and he came to spend one evening with me and a couple of times said, everything okay, Vince? And wow, that those are acts of class, you know. In the yeah. new book, I have a whole chapter where I talk about a rush and uh, uh, an act of class that he did, not only for me, but for students and so on. That was oh, above well, What is young, the new book, Vince? What is the new book? They, uh, well, it's the um, story of Project Hollywood 2. We okay. moved back into the mansion. And uh, you know what? what? What's surprising about it is that it's, it, it really it took a lot of work, three years, and there were many versions of it, but this version is just like such a spiritual gift because it's a series wow, yeah. of oh. deep lessons through it while there's all the craziness Boy, I'm looking the, uh, forward. I mean, I've I've got to see a lot of it firsthand. So I'm really looking forward to. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's a little bit yeah, like also of a of a confession. You know, there's the dirtiest aspect where where I finally open up because there were things that took place over there, like like un, unheard of. You know, like you you would enter, there's a little bit of footage on the internet, but you would enter the room and there'd be like 15, 16 girls right there, staying there, and all like. At one point, I stayed six weeks indoor just fucking for six weeks and and it became just almost like the, some girls were coming just because they had heard of it <laughs> they, they just wanted part of that that thing and there was the tension with all the guys downstairs so uh, they were kind of there protecting me and uh, i mean but there also was the the aspect uh it is, it's very mysterious also because there's the aspect of there were seven un, 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 unidentified sources that were trying to operate some knowing of each other and some not against. And uh, I spoke with a psychologist at some point, and uh, it said one of the deepest, most challenging fear to wrestle with is that of having a threat on your life that is authentic. And I never Mm. thought it would ever happen to me. But when it did, that became a form of vaccination that just like, you know, I I held on to it. I was like, fuck, I don't want to. I don't want to really uh, die, suffer from it and so on, but came a place where I said, fuck it. If it's got to be, it's got to be. So the next couple of days and weeks and months after that and years, you're so fucking free that whatever you want to do, you do it and you speak to people normal. After that, it was so different. It, it was just like no more, no more game. It was just like the ability to just have very little filter unless what, uh, other than what's appropriate between inner and outer. So to see a girl, to go, ah, you. Yes, you, I know. doesn't even make sense what I'm saying. I felt like saying that. Anyway, okay. Uh, Rash, you want to close maybe with, um, uh, very rapidly with a restating of this astonishing convention we're putting together and some of the things along the way, including the video calls that can be accessed uh, from the site and so on? Yeah, I think people should just know that we now have in the works, and it's a done deal, we're just now getting them all together, is that at nighttime we're going to have special coaches there who are coming strictly for coaching people in field. This has never been done before. 
So we have our regular speakers that you've seen, and we've gathered, I think, four so far of the top coaches who are not going to be presenting the day. They're only coming strictly for infield coaching of the guys. So that's, I think, very exciting. Every Tuesday we're doing our um, podcast Q&A with the different coaches. Uh, we have so many. I've done so many fucking interviews. I've just been interviewing left and right on this thing. I'm, I'm into it, man. Once again, you know, it's a, it's a natural expression of who I am, so I'm going to keep doing it. It's just like I'm eating, breathing, and I'm doing this thing right now. So this is beautiful. I hope everybody makes it. Um, you're you're going to be very happy that you went. I guarantee it. I mean, I really, I, I truly know that you're going to be in really good company when you're there. Okay? So sometimes when I said that, I realized sometimes what happens is guys get nervous to go because they don't know anybody. So, you know, some guys are dealing with social anxiety in quotes. And um, I get it. You know what? Just tell your mind to shut the fuck up and let's go. Just show up. You know, just just show up. You could always walk right back out. No one's going to know who the fuck you are. But just show up, okay? Do everything you can to show up. That's it. I mean, over and over and over, just tell yourself, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do this thing no matter what. And the more time you give uh, between you and, and, and making that decision and buying the ticket, the more you just mess up your goal, really, because you, you can't. Let time enter into things like this. When you make a decision, you move. So decide, move, show up. I look forward to the next thing we're going to do. And um, it was a pleasure um, meeting you on the other side, John. And uh, it was yeah. real nice hearing you. So Yeah, that's back at you. Great. Great. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Arash. And I know we've been going on forever. Uh, I just want to, uh, at last, uh, so John, anyone who wants to be in touch with you, give them one way to be in touch with you, and maybe if you want to throw a bonus, anybody that hears this recording before the 14th, uh, uh, you, you, you communicate to us, hey, I heard this, I heard John on the call, and then uh, maybe John, one little bonus you could throw to the guys if they come through you and they, and they sign up for the uh, convention uh, through you, and then also you know, a way to contact you. Great. Uh, my website is theawakenedlifestyle.com or just google John Keegan dating.com and that'll pop up and on my website uh, it's got a lot of great information uh, put out videos and articles uh, throughout every week and I put a lot of uh, thought into making them original and unique and uh, very uh, easy to use so that you can uh, expand your life today uh, what I want to do uh, when you contact me, like Vince just said, I'm going to do more than just give a little bonus. I'm going to give you a, an audio CD that I made that's uh, three hours long, and every moment of it is uh, really powerful because the entire thing is about um, me meeting and connecting with women on the streets of New York City. You hear live conversations, but they're not just the live conversations. They're live conversations where you get to hear uh, the patterns of a normal conversation where a man and a woman connect uh, over and over again. And, and I break down each and every one of them in detail, moment by moment, what I did and then how you can do it too. So if you, uh, that's something that I normally only give to my private clients. Uh, and wow. sign, and do, yeah, those the, are powerful. Yeah. Those are powerful. So, John, can we do this? Can we do anyone who uh, is coming from this call before the 14th of July? Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to put it up right away. Then uh, you uh, register for the convention, whether you do it through John or directly on the site. You email John, and uh, you will get this bonus. Then they, they, those are super potent to see it done and explain at the same time so you understand what was done can save you so much time so thanks for that gift john and yes, i think we'll keep absolutely. it at here uh john will also be on the video call we have one every tuesday you go to the site for that on the last page of the site you have all the explanation on how to join those video conferences they're amazing and also live tomorrow night on my podcast john keegan will be back in a rush will be back so We'll let all of that simmer overnight, and then we'll continue, and tomorrow we'll take your live questions. So think about what you heard today. Call tomorrow night um, for the uh, podcast, and we'll see you guys at the conference. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay, bye. Bye. Good night.